Good morning. Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for September the 8th. Mental capital, very important. Um, we all know about our financial capital. We want to preserve our capital. We want to protect our capital. But most important is to protect your mental capital. You know, we are in a bear market situation, and it can be very trying and, and exhausting. And so you don't want to become complacent here. You want to keep, you know, keep on top of things here. And one of the ways that you preserve your mental capital, like Peter Lynch says, you, you should just ignore economic predictions. They, it's almost like uh, people that think they're gods can predict the future. You cannot predict the future. So you're really wasting your time trying to you know, worry about recession, worry about interest rates, so forth. The market is a discounting mechanism. It already knows. So it's kind of a, a futile attempt. Now, I wanted to give another example of winners of the past. Here's Google, and this is 2009. Now, the market bottomed around March the 10th of 2009. And you can see here with Google, you know, we you know, went through a very difficult period in here. And then all of a sudden, you get this gap up, a major surge in volume, and the stock's breaking out above the 200-day moving average and goes into a very strong uptrend. So I think the most important thing to note here is the fact that the market itself, now this is the S&P 500 down here, the market itself was in an uptrend. So, you know, I go through these examples, I've, I've, there's many of them, and, you know, Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, Tesla, they all have this pattern, but what's most important is that the market itself has to be in some form of an uptrend. So I did want to show an, an interesting indicator that I think is probably one of the better indicators that I have found, which is the aggression index. It's where we're comparing the NASDAQ to the consumer staples. Now, what I did here is I went back to 2000, 2009, and you can see where, you know, growth stocks were underperforming because the thing that we have to realize about a bear market, at least my experience has been, that they always tend to end with a bang. They never really end with a whimper. And when the bottom is in and we start to see a major rally, it's going to be led by the growth stocks. So I think it's very important that we keep a close eye on this aggression index because as you can see here, around March the 10th, we got that breakout and actually got what we call a golden cross on the indicator. So here's the indicator right now. You can see here that, you know, it's been in a very serious downtrend. You know, again, this is just a ratio of growth stocks to, you know, mainly toilet paper and toothpaste type stocks, soap, things like that. And so when those stocks are outperforming the growth stocks, this line's going down. So we broke below this particular moving average. Now, if we start to see some improvement here and we get a major breakout above that upper moving average, I really think that's going to be a meaningful uh, thing to be aware of. Now, we continue to see, now this is the NASDAQ, we continue to see this index continue to be in a downtrend. We got a bounce yesterday, but it really wasn't a whole lot to write home about. If we look at the mid caps, we're seeing some strength in the mid caps actually, where it's actually touching that lower moving average. Mid caps are probably the strongest index. New York Stock Exchange continues to stay buried underneath that lower moving average, kind of stuck. Like I said, we did get a rally yesterday, but it wasn't enough to get us really above that lower moving average. Here's the small caps. Small caps are having, you know, the biggest problem here. Uh, you know, came down, broke through that lower moving average, trying to rally in here, but just just not enough. I'm not I'm not seeing a convincing rally here. S and P 500, same thing. We continue to come down, stay below the lower moving average. We're just not seeing what we need to see. Now, as you can also note, this is the 200-day moving average, which is a very important moving average, and it's in a downtrend. You know, we rallied here between June and August up to the 200-day, were rejected, came back down again. I really think that along with uh, other indicators, this will be important. I also wanted to note here that the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average on the NASDAQ has now dropped back below 25%, and that's kind of a critical area. So it continues to look somewhat iffy. Now, on the, uh, the particular economic indicators we're keeping an eye on, interest rates are trending up. 
Oil is trending down. Financial stocks are trending down. So we're not really seeing anything other than higher interest rates, which is pretty much causing a lot of the problems we're having. Now on new lows, again, we're getting elevation here above 40 a day. The general rule is you want to stay below 40 a day for at least four days. And if you stay above 40 a day for more than four days, it's just not a positive reading. This is the IPO Renaissance Fund. Now, I mentioned earlier, I said, you know, I do think that the market's going to rally at some point, and it's going to be led by the growth stocks. Well, this is probably the growthiest uh, ETF or fund that is out there. It's the IPO Renaissance Fund, which is companies that have recently gone public. As you see here, downtrend, broke below the lower moving average, not looking very constructive. I would keep an eye on this on this fund. If it breaks out to the upside, that's going to tell you that the growth stocks are starting to lead. Trend strength back below zero, continue to have a problem with trend strength. Now that was the NASDAQ. Here's the S&P, again, zero on the trend strength. We're seeing, like I say, a bounce yesterday, but it's just really not been very convincing. Volatility index has been climbing. We got back up above, you know, on a, on a five-day uh, moving average. We got back up around 26. If we're going to see a capitulation in the market, which would, would, would be, a, you know, the bang that I'm talking about where, you know, bear markets tend to end with a bang, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see readings up here. You know, up around 40 would be kind of the area that I would look for. That could be where we put the bottom in. Yield curve, starting to see some improvement there, however, still inverted. Now, on the top five, again, this is just a watch list, things we're keeping an eye on. This is a Chinese retailer called Pinduo Duo. You know, broke out here on pretty heavy volume, actually had somewhat of a gap up. Uh, However, it's somewhat failing that gap up, so it, it's continued to be watching that one. Consolidated Energy, which is um, coal. The coal stocks have been kind of hot here. Uh, again, you know, broke below the 10-day moving average, trying to consolidate. I would continue to watch the coal stocks. Enphase Energy, this is an interesting company. We've, we've owned the stock recently. Uh, it broke out of a base here uh, yesterday on very heavy volume, so that is a gap up. So this, you know, if the market was uptrending, this would definitely be something you would probably want to go ahead and buy. Now, you can say uh, with EQT, which is oil and gas exploration, again, you know, failing uh, to hold the 10 days, somewhat of a downtrend, I would continue to watch. Now, here's First Solar, just like Enphase. We got somewhat of a gap up traded over 4 million shares on uh, yesterday, gapped up. Again, though, we're just not seeing that uptrend in the market that we so desperately need. So let's just keep an eye on things. Uh, my advice at this point is just to continue to hold your cash. You know, it's very tempting to jump on things like First Solar and so forth, but I would really try to wait for that market to get into an uptrend. If you have any questions, please let me know.